Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking. I'm your host, Miss Lucy, and today I'm in Jackson, Louisiana at the Feliciana Cellars Winery, where I'll be stomping grapes. So you stay with us, Shaq. I'm gonna have a good time, and you will too. We'll be right back. The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world, and Louisiana's main ingredient, seafood. We put the same thing into our music that we put into our gumbo, everything. A Louisiana tour guide is available at www.louisianatravel.com. Louisiana crawfish, an appetizing natural resource. Years ago, I began collecting recipes. Some were my own, others were my mama's and grandma's, stored away and almost forgotten. Imagine my delight recently at finding this treasure from my past. How precious. Now, I share these recipes and memories with my children and granddaughter. Just another part of my heritage and Miss Lucy's classic Cajun culture and cooking. Welcome to my kitchen. I just needed another bottle of this fabulous wine from Feliciana Cellars in Jackson, Louisiana, which I will be using today in my dishes. But first, let's visit with Mr. Leroy Harvey from Jackson. Golden muscadine sparkling with early morning dew, ready to be picked. Tim Joe, the only professional vintner in Louisiana, does the whole operation. This tractor-mounted picker vibrates the muscadines off the vines, drops them on a conveyor belt, then dumps them in larger containers to be carried to the winery. Just a quality taste of both the white and purple muscadines, of course, my favorite being the purple ones. They are dumped in a machine which takes out the sticks and stems, rinses them, then sends the product to the crushers, not a la Lucy. Next, the press is loaded with the muscadines. Rice hulls are added to make the fermentation process begin. Juice comes out and gets pumped into stainless steel tanks to ferment for one month at 55 degrees. During this time, the sugar is eaten and the yeast falls to the bottom of the tanks. Then racking takes place, moving from one tank to another, leaving the sediment behind. fine wine products of muscadines which are native to this area. Somebody uh, says, well, if you're a wine snob, then you, you don't really want to try muscadine wines. But let me tell you this. A few years ago, people didn't want to try our catfish and they didn't want to try mm -hmm. our crawfish. Right. But right. look what happened to that. Oh, so we know what's good down right. here. And all I'm right. saying is let's encourage people to at least try our wines and to uh, give them a, a fair taste test because I think it's going to complement the wonderful things that we're doing with food and the great chefs that we have in Louisiana. Yes. It's just unbelievable. And, of course, you're well, one of them. I thank you. And I tell you what, you have the perfect location here in Feliciana Parish because Feliciana means the happy land. That's exactly right. And after right. drinking a, a bottle of your wine, you will be happy. <laughs> And 
and nafra baked speckled trout dish. Of course, this is a wonderful dish which I have learned to prepare. And we have some boiling water in our pot here, which I'm going to add my roux to. Of course, you've got to add cold roux to boiling water. If you have a hot roux, you add cold water. So that's rule of thumb, not your roux. And this is the only way to do it, because if you don't do it that way, your roux will float. And you, naturally, you don't want that to happen to you. So I'm gonna mix all my roux in here, because this will be part of your gravy. Okay. And you dissolve it real well in your boiling water. Okay, very good. This I'm using today is gonna be the speckled trout. And of course, we caught this on our fishing trip that we went on too. It was real, real fun. Okay, now I've got my roux all dissolved, which you can make it fresh. You'd use one cup of oil and one cup of flour. But I, for time element, I wanted to kind of do it faster today. Then I'm gonna add some onions to this. Okay, you have your chopped onions. Okay, and your bell pepper. Chopped bell pepper. Uh, Cajuns don't have chunky chopped vegetables. We just kind of, uh, well, they're chopped, but they're not fine, but they're not chunky. So in, in between. And this is going to be our garlic. So I'm going to add the garlic to it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to saute this real well together. Oh, yes. Mmm. Smells good already. Wish we could have smell-o-vision, but that's not possible yet. I think I'm going to invent that. You know, Cajuns use a lot of roux gravies in their cooking. Mama always had some real good roux in the refrigerator. You can make it and keep it for weeks in your refrigerator, so it'll really hold on real good, and you got it always ready. Of course, I like to make mine fresh, too. Okay, you saute this. All right, let me raise my fire a little bit. Okay, this will work real good. Mmm, yes, this gravy will be delicious. And of course, you serve it over rice. Yeah. And to that, after it's hot and sauteed, it takes about 10 minutes to saute this. And I'm gonna cut my steps short because you know time element. I'm gonna add some chopped up tomatoes. Okay, and let me lower this a little bit. Some tomato soup. I like to use the tomato soup because actually it has a smoother taste. Now, Mama never used tomato soup. She always used the sauce or the paste, but I like the soup because it's real smooth. Okay, this is gonna be a tomato gravy. Yes, mmm. Makes it smell even better. Okay. Very good. Okay. That's beautiful. See that? How all your flavors are all mixed together? And it just, that fish just added to that. It just is just wonderful. So then, what I'm going to do to this gravy, I'm going to add my salt and pepper to the gravy. Because you don't want to season it after you add your fish. Okay, and you know, Cajuns just throw everything in the pot and we cook by feel. So then I'm gonna use my pepper sauce. Add that a bit. Of course, I use some Rotel tomatoes in here, so you don't wanna add too much hot sauce or pepper, but I use the mild kind, so it's not too prominent. There's a lot of misconceptions about Cajun food being very hot, which fiery hot is okay, but not pepper hot. Okay, now, Next, I'm going to add my fish to this. And this is our gorgeous fish that we caught the other day, and it's the trout. However, because this gravy can be made with any fish at all, I like to use the catfish even. You just go ahead and you add your fish, whatever it is, to your gravy, and you cover it real Nice, like this. Okay. Now, before you add it to your oven, put it in your oven, this is the best ingredient that you could use. Okay. 
Uh, you gauge it according to your taste. Let's see, my taste, I love this stuff, so let's just go ahead and cut it real good, because gravy was kind of thick anyway, you know. We can always justify anything. Oops. Very good. You add your wine to this, and it will absorb all those flavors. Very good. Okay. Now. Okay. Now. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this to the oven. We're going to bake this. So... Righty. Mmm, oh, that smells so good. Mmm. Now we'll bake it for about 45 minutes. All right, and now we've got our fish in the oven, and while it's cooking, we will go to our next dish. Our next dish is eggplant casserole, which is a big favorite of mine. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to saute some eggplant in some bacon drippings. Of course, you know, bacon drippings are always good because I get to eat the bacon that I got the drippings from. So this is my eggplant, which I have already sort of pre-sauteed. And I'm gonna show you how I cut this up before. So we're gonna put it in here, and this bacon dripping, and that always adds to the flavor of any dish, trust me. All right, we're gonna let this saute a little bit. I'll lower the fire, okay? And in this pot, I've got some butter. Of course, butter's not too far behind the bacon drippings preference that I have. So I'm going to saute some onions in here, okay? Just throw this in here. Cajuns throw everything in the pot. Onions, and I've got some parsley. Okay, very good. Ooh, cameraman's nightmare. Mmm, smells good. You sort of brown these onions in here. Gives it a different flavor. It kind of caramelizes the, the flavor. Let me get my big spoon here. Okay. Ah, we'll let this saute a little bit. And this here. I'm gonna have to show you how to dress these wonderful eggplants. Okay, Put that there, I'm gonna lower the fire here so we don't wanna burn anything, which I've been known to do several times, but uh, you know, not on national television anyway. I'm gonna go and I'll show you how I dress my eggplant. These are some gorgeous eggplants. Of course, you uh, you want to use any, you can use a big one or a small one, but you take your knife and you just slice it in half. And of course, what this is, is of course, the whole half. And for time element, we have already cut this. Take your knife, your small knife, and you cut around here and you score it. Yeah up and down, okay? And you take your pineapple knife, which these I use all the time for different reasons, okay? You just go around the eggplant. Now I've gotten these, watch, just come right out, just like this, very good. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with this, because you know Cajuns never, never throw anything away, so I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna add it to my, ooh, they're trying to get away. Mm, I don't blame them, I would too. So, scoop this up. This is a pretty big chunk. Let me cut this one down. Okay, because you don't want it too large. You want them small so they cook faster. Now I'm gonna bring this to my pot. So, okay, let me add this to my already sauteed ones, which doesn't really matter. Mmm. <sighs> oh, this smells so good. Those Bacon drippings just add to the flavor. So good. Now, this is already done. Here. I'm going to add all this together. Our onions and parsley. Okay. 
Then I'm going to add some tomatoes, canned tomatoes, which have been, of course, you can use the fresh ones. That's always better. Cut up nice. Okay. Then to this, you add some breadcrumbs. This will hold it together. Okay. Very good. I like the Italian breadcrumbs because that adds to the flavor even more. All right. Then you take your salt and pepper and you season it according to your taste. It's up to you. You know how Cajuns are. Some People prefer the hot, some don't, and some have a salt problem, so you can't use too much salt, which is entirely up to you. Very good. Now, this is the dish that will go into the oven. But first, I'm going to top this off with some cheddar cheese, which we have shredded. Okay, and now I'm going to bake this. And this will bake for about 30 minutes, or at least until the cheese melts. And while that's baking, I'm going to fix our delicious dessert. And now for a very special and new dish, which I learned in Natchitoches also, which was the delicious poached pear. Of course, we never, as Cajuns, cooked that before, but Miss Bobby W. at the bed and breakfast showed us exactly how to prepare this, plus he showed me how to eat it because I didn't know how. Of course, you make your wine sauce with the wonderful fine wine. You just pour it in. Now, you can use the white dry wine. Mmm. Smells good. Tastes good, too. Or you can use the rosé, the red, and I prefer the red wine for the pear because it gives it a beautiful color. So you start cooking this. Of course, you put it on a very low fire. You don't want to cook it too high. To that, you add you some sugar, which you cook this for about 10, 15 minutes. Mix it up real good and until your sugar dissolves completely and you add vanilla flavor to it. Okay. And this will make it real tasty. Mmm. Yes. I'm going to let this cook because this is how you mix your sauce that will go with this poached pear. Okay. I'm going to let that cook down and I'll show you my dress pear or undress pear, I should say. You just take your pear and put it in your sauce. Okay. Now, I'm going to lower this a little bit because you want to baste this real well. Occasionally, you keep basting your pear. Now, the sauce that I'm using here, I've already condensed some. So this gives the pear a beautiful color. And you'll see after a while what I'm talking about. This is beautiful at Christmas time. Now, Okay, I'm going to let it cook and baste it occasionally while I show you how to prepare the pear. Because this looks real hard to do, but it's not at all. It's very simple. So, of course, you want your pears to stand up. And what you have to do is to cut the bottom off like this. So it'll stand in your pot. Of course, I can dress two of them that way. You can see better. Very good. Okay, and you take your pear and you peel it just this way. Very simple, quick and easy, no problem. Just go around. And of course now when I went to eat this, Mr. Bobby had to show me how to eat it because like I said, I had never eaten this before. I mean, but since then, I have fished fixed it for several occasions and I love it. Now, okay, I've got it all. Once it's done, like I'll show you the finished product in a minute, you just cut it with your knife like this and you take your fork and you get your pieces out of it and it, it's just wonderful. It's delicious. So here it is. We're going to, this is cooking real well. So we're going to let this simmer, because this has got to condense. We've got to condense this. I'm going to go ahead and keep basting this. Of 
course, that wine just, it's absorbed into the pear, and it gives that pear such a wonderful flavor. Okay, good. And it's just fabulous. It really dresses up a holiday or just any day. All right, after a very uh, light meal, this is a light dessert to fix. Okay, now, so we're going to keep boiling this down. You want to condense this. Now, to serve this, once the pear is done, take your little bowl or a glass. It's just really according to your preference. And this one is not quite done, but I think it'll, it'll work because the pear was pretty ripe. See the pretty color that's absorbed by the gravy? I call it gravy, but it's really sauce. So let me turn this off. Okay, you just pick your pear up, put it in your dish, and you take your sauce. And you just baste it again. Just like this. Come so. Voila! Beautiful and very good. So now we've completed all our three dishes for today, but I'll show you in a minute the complete meal that I would serve at my house. So I'll just keep boiling this down. We turn this off and we'll view our finished dishes. This is our menu for today. Our very delicious and gorgeous baked speckled trout, of course, served over rice. And our very tasty eggplant casserole. And last but not least, our gorgeous pear, which is just wonderful. And I would never serve this meal without coleslaw. These are only a few of the many dishes that can be prepared with Louisiana products such as trout or catfish and fine wine from Feliciana Cellars. Well, after a hard day's work in the kitchen and in the fields, I'm going to share with you a letter from one of my viewers. Dear Miss Lucy, just a note to tell you I enjoy your show so much. My husband also enjoys it because you have taught me how to prepare a tasty meal. Your stories are delightful. The scenes of parts of Louisiana and all it has to offer are so great and very educational. Thank you so very much. Your friend, Jan McCoy from Wilmot, Arkansas. Thank you, Jan, for sharing this letter with me. And thank you for joining me today. So now I'm going to relax and enjoy the fruits of the vineyards. Mmm, bon santé, chef.
V, you didn't do that. <laughs> well, we're going to look at Fon Fon. Oh, that Noah Langer. <laughs> We gotta do it again. I'm gonna fall. <laughs> the Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's cooking series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world, and Louisiana's main ingredient seafood. We put the same thing into our music that we put into our gumbo. Everything. A Louisiana tour guide is available at www.louisianatravel.com. Louisiana crawfish, an appetizing natural resource.